morning, church. It's kind of quiet in here, but from your house, you're part of the church, and it's good to be together. And I just want to say, praise the Lord. I'm glad to be a part of the body of Christ. There was a thought that came to me this morning. You know, besides being warriors, soldiers in the army of God, we're also part of the bride. And so there's reason for joy and happiness in our lives. We don't, when we think of a wedding, and the wedding's coming as the bride of Christ, when we think of a wedding, there's not a lot of sorrow and down feelings that go with that. But because of God and Him being in control, we can, we can be encouraged, even if circumstances don't change. And so I thank God for that. For announcements, I just have one that, I, that I'm aware of that needs to be made, and that's just a reminder, um, the offering this morning is for the building fund. So remember that if you would, please. And I think there's instructions online as far as how the best way is to give now since we're not able to gather here. So let's pray. Father, it's just wonderful to gather with you. And even though we're scattered this morning and not in the same location, your spirit is not disturbed by that. Your spirit is not held back by that. And I pray that you would minister wonderful life and courage and hope to every heart, every person that's listening this morning. I pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you would move our eyes to Jesus. Move our eyes to heaven, to the one who can really help us. Move our eyes to the one that can give us peace. There's no need for peace if there's no trouble about, but Lord, we need peace. And you've promised peace through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I pray that you would bring that. I pray that you would bring freedom to speak. I pray for Brother Tim as he shares the message, that you would just give a wonderful freedom and a peace in his heart, Lord, to share your word. And may your word bring forth fruit, Lord. We honor you and we thank you for being a wonderful Heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to speak a few words in opening here, then we'll have a time of worship, and then Brother Tim is going to bring the message today. Um, John 16 tells us, what I want to talk about this morning is, is having faith in trials. Um, and John 16 33 just simply says, here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. And when I was thinking about that, my thought went to, you know, what is the purpose for some of that? Oftentimes, when I go through trials, I want to think, or my tendency is to think that it's there for a correction for me, that it's there because I did something wrong or because somewhere I wasn't in the perfect will of God. And so my question to you this morning is, are trials just to bring correction to us? Um, Romans 5 and James 1 both tell us that trials are to develop patience and endurance and hope. But my question is, will God bring trials if we are living in direct and perfect obedience to his will for us. And for that answer, I'd like to turn to Matthew 14. I'd love to have some feedback on that, though it's not very possible. Um, but I know my tendencies, and I know that often when I'm walking through a trial, my first thought is, Lord, where did I mess up? Where are you trying to direct me? Why, why a trial, Lord? Um, in, in Matthew 14, verse 22, and just previous to this, Jesus had fed the 5,000. You know, those disciples, they had, they had some wonderful experiences. Um, so often they saw miracles happen right in front of them. They saw the, the people being healed. They saw the water turn to wine. They saw impossibilities, and that was so much a part of their life. But Jesus found it necessary to also bring them into trial sometimes. And after he fed the 5,000, he told the disciples in verse 22, immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sends the people home. 
And after he sent them home, he went up into the hill to pray by himself, and night fell, and he was there alone. And I want you to notice here that Jesus is the one that gave those disciples the command or the directive to get into that water, to get into the boat, and to go. They were exactly where Jesus wanted them. But in verse 24, he says the disciples were in trouble, far away from land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. And it was 3 o'clock in the morning. And that's real church. We find ourselves in places like that. But I, I want to counter the thought that it's because you weren't obedient to the Lord. That's false. These disciples were exactly, they followed the command of Jesus to the T. They got into the boat and they were out on the lake. But this storm was there and they were afraid. Jesus came towards them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once and he said, don't be afraid. Take courage because I'm here. And I think that's his answer to me when I am in a trial. Get rid of the thought that it's God trying to change your direction or trying to reprove you or trying to get you to change something, trying to get you to realize that you've made a mistake. No, not necessarily. They were where God wanted them. But as James and as Romans tells us, trials have a purpose, and they say it's to develop patience and endurance and hope. And the first words that Jesus said, he said, don't be afraid. And that's where we often end up exactly where the disciples were. Fear wants to come in. Because just like here, you know, that, that storm they were in or that, it, that wind they were experiencing, the, the, the high waves, it was beyond their ability. You know, they were fishermen. A, lot of, a couple of them were fishermen. They were used to being on a boat. They knew what waves were. They knew what wind was. But this was bad. They were, it was beyond their ability to cope with. And they were afraid. And even in that, Jesus said, don't be afraid. Why? Because he said, I'm here. And church, it's like that today. It doesn't matter what trial you're facing. God hasn't left. And what he's looking for is faith. Peter called to him and he said, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come. And here Peter gets his eyes on Jesus and he starts having some faith. And he said, Jesus, if it's you, tell me to come out on the water. And Jesus said, come. And so Peter got out and he walked on the water and he was, he was looking at Jesus in a storm, in the middle of wind, in the middle of a terrifying experience. Peter just steps out of the boat and I can't imagine it was smooth right where Peter was walking, but he was looking at the Lord. The storm hadn't gone away, but he was okay because Jesus was there and because he was watching Jesus. But then he did look at the storm. Let's read on here. Peter went over the side of the boat and he walked on the water. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, and then he was terrified again. And church, I've found that. I have found that over and over and over. In the, even in the last few weeks, I don't know how often I've had to just repent and come back and get my eyes back onto Jesus again because my eyes want to wander and see all the waves. And immediately I get discouraged and I lose my faith. And I do what Peter did. I sink. But even in that, there's no condemnation from the Lord. You know, Peter, when he went down there, I doubt he had a, a weak little... Lord, help me. In, in Hebrews 11, verse 6, it says that it's impossible without faith to please God. But then let's read the rest of the verse. Faith is what Peter was lacking. Faith is so often what we're lacking. But then he says, the end of that verse says, Anyone who wants to come to me, to him, must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. And I looked up, in the King James, it says diligently. And I looked that up, and it says to search out, to crave, or to demand. 
It was, it was not what that cry that Peter had when he was going down was not just a feeble little, Lord, help me. He was, he was needing the Lord. He was wanting Jesus. He was seeking that. And, God, and Jesus answered his prayer, and he, he just said, Jesus immediately reached out and he grabbed him. And I want to tell you, church, if you found yourself out of the boat and you're in the water and you're sinking, cry out to the Lord. He's not condemning you. In the first place, he didn't put you in the trial to, for a bad reason, to see how strong your strength was possibly or to see how your faith is doing. But it was not to bring you down. And if you're going down, seek the Lord. Get your eyes back on the Lord because there's faith to be had. Like I said earlier, we so often think that we're, the only thing that we're doing in this life is just fighting and fighting and fighting. We get the picture that we're a soldier and we think sometimes that we're barely making it as a soldier. But remember, we're also the bride of Christ. He longs for us. He wants us. He wants to help us. You know, when we were, any of us men that are married, when we were dating, there was strong desires for our wife-to-be. Jesus is looking at us that way. The Father knows that we're to be the bride of His Son. He's got a tremendous heart of care for us. And He realizes that if we get our eyes off of Jesus, we're going to sink. We're going to be terrified. If we look at the things around us, there's reason. You know, Peter, I have no condemnation for Peter. There was a terrible wind going on out there. There was high waves. There was reason to be terrified, except for when he was looking at Jesus. If he could get his eyes back on Jesus, you know, he walked back into the boat. He was okay because Jesus was with him and he realized it again. And may we realize that Jesus is with us. It may not be... The storm may not settle immediately. But Jesus is with us, and we can walk on the water. We can overcome. We can get through it. And there will be a time when we get through it. Eventually, Peter got back into the boat. The wind was calm, and they, they got to the other side. They got to their destination. This was just something in the progress, in their, in their trip, in, in the journey they were taking. This storm came up. And the trials that were in that in now are not an end. They're not meant to be an end. They're not meant to destroy us. But he's just testing our faith a little bit. And so I want to encourage you with those few words this morning that get your eyes on Jesus. Don't feel like you're, you're sinking because of something that you've done wrong and it's God's, that God is pushing you down or that he's casting you out of the boat and that he's trying to drown you. He's not. He wants you to walk on the water, but he just wants to cry. Like Hebrews 11 says, he wants you to diligently seek him. Get a hold of God and realize that it's okay. Without faith, it's impossible. Without courage, we can't have faith. And so, I, I, you know, if sometimes we need to tell ourselves 10 times in a day to get our eyes off of the storm and to, to look at Jesus to see what Peter did before he stepped out of the boat. He saw Jesus. He saw the power that was in Jesus. He realized that it was okay to walk on this storm, this stormy water, if Jesus was there. So if we've looked at the waves again and it's gotten us down, just look at Jesus again. I can, I can promise you his strength is not too small to get you to walk on the water. And may these times develop endurance and patience and a hope that doesn't let go. I could, you know, probably if Peter would have had the chance to walk on the water again, I want to say he probably would have kept his eyes on the Lord and he would have walked all the way to Jesus. That's kind of what God's looking for in our lives. These storms don't happen just once. Often it's because I don't learn after the first one. My faith needs build up. My endurance needs build up. You know, a runner, when he's trying to build endurance, he doesn't just run one time and figure he's good to go 25 miles or however far he's running. Hopefully not that far for me, two miles. You don't just get out and run one time, but you build endurance 
And so often that's what these trials are for. That's what the storms are for, is to build that endurance. He's not destroying us, but he wants to build endurance in us. And so take courage, church. Take courage. Look to the Lord. Get your eyes on the Lord. And I'm sure he can bring courage into your lives. Really looking forward to the day when we can gather here again. And hopefully sooner rather than later. And let's pray for that church. Let's pray that we can do that. You know, it would be a terrible thing if my physical body would be distributed here, there, and everywhere. And as a body, I think we need to be together and to encourage each other. So let's pray that we can do that. And like I said, sooner rather than later. That's the cry of my heart, that we can get together and encourage each other so that we're not apart, so that we're not uh, a body that's not functioning properly. And granted, God can give us grace to walk through. He's got, he's got reasons for what he allows us to walk through. But there's just a, there's a desire to have everybody here again. It's not as, it's not as good to just talk into a camera. Um, but I'm ready to see your faces. So God bless you, Bill.